Oh, when did you get here? No, no, I was, I, I was just reading. Yeah, no, no interruption, no problem. Yeah, yeah, of course. I'll help you out. That's, no, that's no problem. I'll just, I need a bookmark. Hold on. Like, no problem. No interruption. No, no problem. What? You need help naming acids? Yeah, no problem. No problem. Okay, hold on. Let's let's do that. Let's do that right now. Okay, this one is probably the most difficult of all the namings. I'm not going to I'm not going to be uh dancing around the bush here, okay? I'll be straight up with you. This is tough stuff. All right? Because it's kind of confusing. They have classical acid names, and that's what you're learning right now. So, but first things first, let's name this as if they were ionic compounds, okay? So that's what we're going to write down first. Look at this one in the top left-hand corner of your screen, HS. If we were to name this as an ionic compound, its name would be hydrogen sulfide, right? Hydrogen sulfide would be the name of this compound. But the thing is, these, these compounds are different. They have an aqueous state, which means they are in water. Each and every one of these are aqueous. And as per our definition that we learn, um, is that anything that releases a hydrogen in water, so if it releases that hydrogen, you put an aqueous by there, it's going to be in water. If it releases a hydrogen, it will be an acid. So each and every one of these are an acid. Okay? Hydrogen, water. Hydrogen, water. Hydrogen, water. All right? So in order to name this properly as, as, a, uh, as an acid, first thing, we're going to name it like an ionic compound. Hydrogen sulfide. Now, we can name it hydrogen sulfide and still understand that it's an acid, but we'd actually have to call it aqueous hydrogen sulfide. So I'm going to write aqueous. Aqueous hydrogen sulfide. Okay? Now, if your ionic name ends in IDE, the way we name this acid is we go hydro blank ic acid you see that hydro blank ic, blank ic acid okay so hydrogen sulfide so if it ends in ide hydro blank ic acid so in this example because we have sulfur this acid name is hydro sulfuric acid This is a little bit different of a story, okay? Let's write down its ionic compound name. We have aqueous hydrogen, and this is sulfate. Okay, if it ends in A-T-E, okay, your ionic compound name, if it ends in A-T-E, we are going to call it Blank ic acid. Okay? Do not put the hydro in there. Hydro ic acid is only if your ionic compound name ends in IDE. Okay? This is the classic acid name. So in this case, this is going to be sulfuric acid. Pretty easy, huh? Let's take a look at this one. Let's write down its ionic compound name, aqueous hydrogen. Oh, this is interesting. It has one more oxygen than the reference anion sulfate. So this is aqueous hydrogen per sulfate. Okay? Remember our naming of polyatomic ions, right? Um, because there's one more oxygen than a reference anion, we would put that prefix per down there. And so it's really easy. Per blank ic acid. Just like that. Per blank ic acid. In this case, it's again sulfur. So this is per sulfuric acid. 
all right? Now the rules for, and that, that goes the same as if this were, um, if this turned into a two less than the reference anion, so if this is H2SO2, then this would be hyposulfite, right? But we're gonna do sulfite right now. So I'll, I'll finish this later. So this one, aqueous hydrogen sulfite. You can take a look at, on the periodic table for all these polyatomic ion forms uh, if you if you need to, okay. But because this ends in I T E, all right, we're gonna have a different ending here. We are gonna have blank os O U S acid. So this one, because we have sulfite, aqueous hydrogen sulfite, is now sulfur. Sulfurous acid. Sulfurous acid. Okay. Now I'm going to quickly return back to this. See, so if we had sul one less oxygen from this, then we have aqueous hydrogen hyposulfite. Hypo and sulfite. It's the same pattern. We put hypo. I almost put H Y H I. Hypo blank us acid okay it follows the same pattern as the ites and the eights boom okay so these this is our rule this is our guideline and this is all written for you if you're in grade 10 in alberta right now right here then you will be following this type of rules. So let's do a couple of quick um, examples. Here we go. Click. Magic. Technology. All right. We have ourselves HCl. Now, all these are aqueous. Sorry, I didn't put that down. Don't mean to confuse you now. Okay. So first I'm going to write down the ionic compound name, if it were so. Aqueous, sorry I'm scribbling, hydrogen chloride. Now let's double check to make sure this is an acid. There's a hydrogen, it's in water. Hydrogen will be released in water, therefore this is a, uh, an acid. So we write down this, this uh ionic compound name or the IUPAC name that's what that's what it officially is called the IUPAC name is aqueous hydrogen chloride and we understand that being a or an acid but it ends in IDE so let's learn the classic way this is going to be hydro because we're going to be looking let's look at quickly our our model here if it ends in IDE we go hydro blank ic acid hydro the blank is the going to be the chlorine here right see that right there Hydrochloric, okay? Hydrochloric acid, right beside it, but I'm running out of room. Hydrochloric acid, HCl. Let's take a look at this one. Aqueous hydrogen, and this is carbonate. I almost forgot what it is. Carbonate. Don't try and call it hydrogen monocarbon trioxide. It's not molecular, okay? Even though hydrogen can act as a, as a metal and a nonmetal, and carbon is a nonmetal, and oxygen's a nonmetal, don't call it and name it as a molecular compound. CO3 is a polyatomic ion, therefore, this is going to be named like an ion. So, aqueous hydrogen carbonate 8 ends in. ATE or carbonate ends in ATE, which means, according to our rules, now I'm going to simulate looking on the back of the periodic table, ends in ATE, blank ic acid. Carbon ic acid. Just like that. Okay. Releases wa hydrogen in water. A aqueous 
hydrogen nitrite, okay? NO2, NO3 is nitrate, NO2 is one less oxygen, so this is nitrite. We look on our rules, if it ends in I-T-E, blank us acid. So this is going to be nitrous acid. That's, that's as difficult as it is, okay? <clears throat> if you're wondering right now, okay, great, now you've helped me name acids, what about naming bases? Bases are very, very simple. Bases are named just like ionic compounds, okay? Aqueous magnesium hydroxide, right? So if we take our paper and we bring it down here a bit, okay, brand new sheet. If we have MgOH, okay, magnesium hydroxide, okay, this is aqueous. According to these laws, bases are those compounds which in water release hydroxide, a polyatomic ion. This one has hydroxide and aqueous, therefore it is a base. The naming is just like ionic though. Okay, magnesium is not multivalent, so we don't have to worry about that. Okay, so magnesium, okay. Oh, by the way, this is aqueous. I should, I'm gonna drop it down just a bit more. Aqueous magnesium hydroxide. Okay, just like that. Aqueous magnesium hydroxide. That's the way I want you. Um, that's the way that I want you to write my homework for me, okay? So every base, go aqueous magnesium hydroxide. Okay? Those are Mr. Levitt's science expectations. That's a base. We did acids. You may need to watch this video again because that was a lot to take in. So good luck. Make sure to keep going until you know exactly how it's done. Peace.